Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Knee Slapping K-Pop Podcast. I am here, and today I am joined with Sammy. Hello. And uh, we are here again with uh, a returning concept that we didn't know was going to be a returning concept at the time. But um, here we are. Here we are. We're here with another evil PowerPoint for you, because if Vincenzo gives us anything, it at least gave us an incredibly fun Useful. and exciting way to talk about dramas that we think are really bad. <laughs> so. Oh, yes. It is, I mean, I think drama criticism has been left to reviews, and there aren't that many. No. I feel like, for these exceptionally bad shows, we mm-hmm. need to be the people that come out swinging with a put-together PowerPoint presentation, yes. high school style, yes, yes. of for presenting just, our like, arguments. memes and, like, nonsense. About, I mean, again, high school style. Complete nonsense. <laughs> but, like, presenting our arguments and giving our reasoning. And mm-hmm. it's better to have graphics. It is. And they're fun. Yes. Have fun we have graphics a, on this We have audio a lot of fun podcast. making these. But if you know, if you want to see it, come to the YouTube channel. Oh, this is a mostly, like, you can still get the gist, but, like, it's a mostly YouTube-centric. And also, this one's very colorful and pretty. It will. The experience will definitely be enhanced if you see the PowerPoint oh, yes. along with it. So. But but also the fact that um we put, I think it's slowly, it's also going to make our PowerPoint skills better. It will. We're getting very good PowerPoint skills um, this year, apparently. Me, yes. write, like, writing a whole trivia game with PowerPoint stuff, and here we are again with an evil PowerPoint. So. Yes. The evil PowerPoint. Thank you, Taekyun. You thank are you, Taekyun. an icon What of an icon. Um, so we're here to talk about imitation today, because I don't think we've actually said what we're talking about yet. Oh, yes. So this is um, our evil PowerPoint on why imitation sucks. We've, I think, mentioned it already in the past that we were watching the show, and we are not enjoying it in the slightest, and it kept having getting finished worse. it now, it's it's terrible. <laughs> it kept getting worse. It got, so, that, it got so bad. Weirdly, so, so and this bad. is, we'll, we'll get more into it when we get to the that PowerPoint slide, but it wasn't that, like, the plot wasn't terrible because there wasn't a plot. There was no plot. There, it's, like, there's no plot. <laughs> I would rather have had a bad plot than us just sort of meandering in circles and nothing was accomplished. It's so frustrating because it it honestly feels like they tried to put a lot of stuff in there for a show that's only 12 episodes, but they nothing happened But, at like, all. yeah. They, Absolutely they did nothing, nothing happened. with anything that they introduced. Like, it was an odd situation where I was, like, they had major pacing issues, oh, yes. I think, is what it was. Is because obviously you're spending the most time with your your main lead couple, but it's also seeming like they tried to carve out time for the other couples, but because they didn't have enough time, it means that no one got enough time. And then you, all of the time we spent with the main couple was, like, useless time. So, like, in it's, the end, nobody ended up winning In a weird that. way, I think that they were trying to set up all of these issues and all of these, um, like, plot lines for all these couples realized after they had established them that they did not have time to finish them. Yeah. And so they just, we just dropped half the all. plot. They No, they just dropped the plot. And just had them, like, run in circles for the next couple episodes until the show was over. There's really a stretch of, like, between, like, episode four and, like, episode ten where there's just nothing. nothing That's most occurs. of the show. Nothing, nothing happens occurs. the whole time. Yeah, you get, like, the setup of all the characters in episodes one through four. Mm-hmm. You get somewhat of a payoff to one storyline and maybe that alone. And then in the middle, you just have everyone a roaming lot of, in circles. An absolute, like, Nonsense. stretch of nothing. Absolutely so I think, nothing. So I think we're going to start with the first thing that we got from this show, before the show even aired. Yes, yes, yes. Which we call the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm-hmm. Which was the introduction to our three main groups. So imitation, for the people that don't know, for the people that are watching this and... No idea what imitation no is. No idea what imitation is. Imitation is a show in which... This girl group, it's a, it's about one specific member of tea, of a girl group called Tea Party, mm-hmm. which I'm shocked that there is not an actual K-pop group called Tea Party. Honestly. At least, at least minimally made up of children. Yes. <laughs> but yes. So there's this uh, female lead, she's in that group, and she falls in love or is entangled with or 
I don't know, meet, hate, then fall in love with this member of this They have a complicated relationship, po- even when they are in a relationship. Yes. It's very I complicated. I never understand, like, when, I don't, at, this is just because it's a bad show. At no, I'm a sucker for a good haters to lovers relationship. Like, that is, like, that is top tier drama right there. Mm-hmm. But this show, I have at I at no point understood when that transition happened. No, not nor really. Any... It's confusing. Also, so the male lead is a member of a boy group called Shax, and Shax Rob... is essentially like the equivalent of like EXO. They're very yes. popular. However, and then there's the uh, second male lead, which is in a group called Sparkling. He is useless. So is the group Sparkling. And Sparkling is supposed to be a new good boy group, and so is Tea Party. The thing here is, I don't understand the popularity of any of these groups. No. Because the popul- as we go, as we'll talk about, this show I don't think understands how K-pop works. Not at all. It has no understanding of how K-pop works. The actual level of popularity these groups have does not actually make sense. No. So, but before we even got the show, we got three songs. Well, we got Tea Party song, um... Show Me. Show Me. We got Shax's song, um, Malo. Malo. And then we got Sparkling song, Diamond? Shining Diamond, I Shining think. Shining Diamond. Yeah. Which is just a 17 song. It is, but it's, uh... <laughs> Much worse. So it's much worse. It's a terrible song. Ter- it's a terrible so, song. Weirdly, both me and Kayla, if anyone's watched our top 100 songs of the quarter, of the first year, half of the year, we mm-hmm. like the Shacks and the Tea Party song. Those They're are very good. quite they good. They are shockingly good songs from songs coming out of fake groups from a K-drama. Like, yeah, these are actually very good songs. Like, this is almost not even an OST. This is like it's just a K-pop song. thing. This is just a pop song. It's actually pretty good. Sparklings is garbage. Sparklings mm-hmm. is this weird, pseudo-cute concept that's very bad. It's like they went purposely so far out of their way to make the song sound the bad, is what it sounds with like. It is at some point we we thought about it and we're like, are they making sparkling songs purposefully bad? Because yeah. they're going because for they're the a fact that they are boy a new group. Goo boy group. But this but if this show was smart and was actually trying to say something about the idol industry. They would have done that, but this show is not. We've come we were to given, realize not giving it too much credit. It's not trying yeah. to say anything because we were given no indication at all that that song was meant to be a bad song. And so I'm like, so did someone make this song and think it was a good song, or like, are we is it just a purposefully so, bad? Like, song? What are we doing? Oh, so so to go over the casting of this drama, oh, yes. I think the casting really adds to you know some of what this drama. The issue is. So, the girl who's playing the female lead doesn't really do a lot of other stuff. She is in Parasite. She's the younger daughter. She's the daughter of the rich family in Parasite. Yeah, she's the girl that gets tutored in Parasite. She is also, um, concurrently in Doom at Your Service right now, where she plays, like, essentially, like, a godlike character there. Which I've seen clips of. What I will say, and we'll get to it when we get to more of the inexperienced actors, Mm -hmm. I think I've come to the realization that the acting in this show, they're not bad actors. No. Because her performance is not good in this. She's great. She's great at doing your service. service, She's She's so good. good. Yeah. In this, I just think that they got, you know, you get the script that's a block of wood about a character that's a block of wood Mm -hmm. and a director that probably doesn't really. Like, I don't want to say really anything about the director, but so there's only much so much can anyone can do yeah. to save this. And this should not have been saved because I don't think it should have been made. No. Um, Tea Party's other two members, one of them is Na Young, formerly of Priston and IOI. And IOI. Uh, and then the other girl is a singer named Minso. I don't really know what else she does. I know she's a soloist, but that's it. Yes. Um, Sha- so then moving on to Shax, the uh, first male lead is June of Yukis, who is also on the unit and in UNB. Oh, God. Um, and then we also have Hui Young of SF9 in here. And the former member of Shax is a Chani. former member. is played by Chani, also of SF9. Um, we have one of the members uh, is Yuri, who was on Produce X 101. And then we have Jongho of ATs, who plays the Maknae of the group. And then I think the guy who is the leader is just an actor. I I don't think he's from anything. 
Yes. I mean, overall, like, none of the songs are particularly, like, none of them are belty. None of them are, like, super difficult where, like, a member would shine. Like, they're not yeah. true K-pop songs. If they yeah. were real K-pop songs, they'd be very boring, bland songs. But the fact that this is coming out of a TV show, you kind of, you know, right, you give right. it a pass. So, uh-huh. like, they're not really, especially if you watch a choreography video for these songs, the choreo, especially the Shaq's choreo. <laughs> the Shaq's seen, choreo is so I've funny seen, watching the dance like, practices. You watch 80s and you watch SF9 and you're like, oh, they can, even you kiss, like, they yeah. were pretty decent dancers. You watch this, they're going at maybe 40%. Like, oh, barely, barely, like 40% barely 40% effort. 40. Like, I'm yeah. giving them a lot of credit if they're going at 40%. They look, because you also have to remember, when this was shooting and we saw clips yes. of this show, yes, yes. this is when Kingdom was also so, shooting. Hui Young Chani and then all of ATs were also preoccupied with Kingdom at the yeah, time. They, they were also were learning the, the insanity that was Kingdom. So then Sparkling has uh Yunho, Sungwa, and San, all three from ATs. Yeah. And this other and this, this other, other man. This other kid who's from Boys Republic. Who's from Boys Republic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I like the fact that we have four members. We could have had a group that we was just had an AT subunit. We could have just had an AT subunit. Sparkling is essentially just an AT subunit, but With, like featuring Boys Republic. Mm-hmm. Who was I uh, think dead? Yeah, I think they are. I don't know how or why he ended up in this drama. To be honest, I don't know. You got to pay rent. <laughs> sure. Um, there's another girl who is a soloist. Her, uh, her character name is Lalima. She's played by Gion, formerly of, or maybe currently of Tiara. I don't know what's going on with Tiara. I think Tiara is also dead. Um, but that's who, who, she is. There's also, uh, the CEO of this company that owns Tea Party is played by Danny Ahn of G.O.D. Um, sure. for some reason. And I think that's all of, like, the, the important idols. people. Yeah. Yes. Um, if I'm being honest, like, these songs, like, you can tell that some of these people are professional singers. Yeah. Like, they have sort of, they they know how to, like, play up the idleness of it. And some of these songs are good, some of these songs are bad. But the fact that that was sort of, before we actually got any of the show, this sort of intrigued me because the Tea Party song is good, the Shaq song is good. It got me excited for this drama because the songs are actually good. Not just that, but like we, at that point, we're like, oh, if Sparkling is a Nugu boy group, maybe they purposely purposely gave them a bad bad. song. Yeah. And like, you know, they don't, because again, you look at like, if you're looking at the evil PowerPoint, you're looking at Sparkling, none of these boys, look at them. They don't look happy to be in no. these outfits. Hui Young been... looks like he hated being there the entire time he was on this show. Well, Hui Young also, but like if you look at Sparkling, even San, e- the Boys Republic kid looks unpleased. They look so unpleased being there. Like mm. they don't, they are not enjoying it. No, and I thought I maybe also, that was like, the point of Sparkling right. was that they are a new goo boy group that like. See, that would have been the concept. An, an really cool concept if it was, like, why are we doing this concept? That would have been we a really cool We are grown-ass cool adults. Element. Why are we doing this? Because the casting of ATs for these roles in the beginning was also very confusing because in, like, ATs, you just look at them as a group and you're gonna shove three of them into this cute boy group and I'm like, the question, like, the casting is questionable because it's like, you could, it, especially because ATs hasn't had done any type of acting before. And all of a sudden, it was like, we're going to take four of them and we're going to shove them in this show and make them be a completely different group than what they, like, are known yeah. for. It was just weird. It's, like, a very I mean, questionable decision it's all, like, for me. Just the fact that we had Hui Young and Chani, that would have been, like, a thing to note. Hui Young and Chani together, yeah, is also a weird decision. That's also, but, like, that is completely overshadowed by the fact that there's four ATs members in yeah. this one show, which is also... Just an odd thing, like, usually if you're an idol group, like, you're getting the one idol, you're not Mm -hmm. getting the half Half of this group. group. The half of the group is here. It's it's very weird. Yeah. So then we go to the fact that the show had the budget of a sandwich. No, no budget at all. Absolutely no. zero this budget. This show was given. had such lo- I And as it went on, you could tell that they were kind of running out of money. Mm-hmm. Because it feels so small. The one thing I will th- I will say about K-pop is that, like, it at least looks larger than life. It looks big. It looks fancy. It looks nice. 
if the again there's a way to make the fact that this show had a low budget work make mm-hmm. it so that like again if you like portray it as big but then you like pull back and it's like well really the idol world is very small very isolating very cold mm-hmm. that works if you have some moments where it looks like there's money put in yeah like you know what would have really helped this show a singular music video what that actually Just looks a music like music video that actually like i'm not even saying not, don't go full bts blackpink blow the budget on a and a shacks video that looks like an exo video don't do right. that like that, i'm not asking for that but just like a simple actual video that looks like a k-pop video you have what K-pop would have stars. also helped was if they had one decent like live performance stage. oh yeah because there are every single performance they shot that was either supposed to be on a music show or a concert was shot on the exact same stage and had and absolutely it, nothing on the stage the stage oh, yeah, is yeah. empty like, I think other than maybe that first tea party where it kind of had a tried table. to make it, it yeah, had a they table made of it try stuff to look, on it. Yeah, they kind of made it try to look like, you know how M Countdown will do, like, they'll make the stage look, fit the concept. Yeah, you get, like, a nice stage You production. get, like, a nice stage, and it's, sometimes it's crazy where it's just right. cluttered and filled with things. Mm-hmm. This one was very small and just had a couple little things that made it look like a tea party. And what's which is, and which my which is my, what's mind blowing to me is that a lot of those M countdown and music show stages, even when they're lower budget, at least have like a digital thing up in the background. Yes, that makes it look cool. It has the group name, it has songs or, or the song on it or whatever. And I feel like that's not a like an expensive thing to no. do. No, and also and I it, feel like you could have done so much with this show. Yeah, like you have the resources, you have the idols, you actually have people that like know the industry because they're in it. Mm -hmm. And yet this show just feels so disconnected because it doesn't understand the end. I feel like it doesn't understand what it has. It has no idea. Absolutely no idea. Even if it, like, it's these little things like this where, like, nothing feels real, nothing looks real, nothing, like, you're, it's a cheap copy. Mm Mm-hmm. And it just doesn't. It makes Maybe it that's feel the all real that. point of the show imitation is that it's just an imitation of the K-pop industry. A cheap Maybe. copy of Maybe. the K-pop industry. Maybe. Do you want to get into the characters? Yeah, let's get into our our favorite three characters here. So our the if you our male lead, June from Yukis, then mm-hmm. our lovely leader of Shaxx. Couldn't by... tell you his name at all. No. The character or the actor who plays no, him. No. No one's names are very clear in this show. No one cares. And then the leader. Leader? No, he's not no, the leader not of Sparkling. The leader. We've learned that Random he's not the leader. Random member of Sparkling. Sparkling. This other member of Sparkling. The one that's we not call... in ATs. Yes, we call the Little Bitch Brigade. Mm hmm. Because the thing with them is that they are such whiny little bitches, and I hate it. All of the time. Literally, like, none of, like, at any given point in time, there is something to complain about, and it's usually absolutely useless, but they just feel the need to complain about everything and every, everything and everybody, like, at all points in time. So, they're terrible. We want to go through them one by one, because I feel like the two, the two boys, the two side, side characters are sort of very similar. Side bitches, yeah. So, our, our main bitch, main Mm -hmm. bitch baby, who we like to call him. He yep. is, like, his story arc doesn't actually make any sense to me. because I don't think he has a story arc, to no, be perfectly like honest. Like he is trying... the same person the whole way he through. He is. It's a failed story arc, but I feel like what they were trying to do was have him sort of grow from this cold, all about me, I'm the star mm-hmm. member of this K-pop group, to being like, hey, we're a team, we're in this together, high school musical bullshit. The same thing is, the thing with that, though, is he doesn't interact with the members of his group at all. No. Over the course of the show. I mean, <laughs> So he, they don't give him the time to even do that. I mean, he barely interacts with, like, once he goes to the female lead, like, that storyline goes in circles so often that I'm, like, confused I think by, there's, like, like four the or is. five episode arc where it focuses in on acting instead of, like, the K-pop industry, where he is really only ever interacting with the female lead. And that whole time that we're doing that storyline, it just, nothing happens and it goes nowhere. hmm Yeah, I don't, 
I'm very confused by his storyline. I think that his storyline doesn't... I, no one's storyline makes any sense. Mm-hmm. No one really grows or changes as a person in the show. Everyone just sort of stays the same. I it, think that the main problem with his character is a flaw that I think was... It's something that was written into his character initially that I just personally don't think is a good... It, it doesn't give him good motivations for anything because... So I read some of the Invitation webcomic because the show is based off of a webcomic because I wanted to see if the webcomic was this bad. We'll say, webcomic, exponentially better than this show. The webcomic, yeah, I think, is actually well written. They... The characters are interesting. Like, it's, they're so much better. They didn't actually adapt the webcomic. It just they did not. Like they... It was not an adaptation of the webcomic at they all. They just sort of took the name of the webcomic, took a general, like, they it's took about the K-pop characters, group. but didn't even really take the characters because the characters are all different. Mm-hmm. They, they act completely differently than how they do in the webcomic. Uh-huh. But anyway, his main motivations throughout this show and the webcomic is essentially that he doesn't like the female lead because he doesn't like it when people like try to like get famous by copying others because the main female lead gets famous because she looks like another idol, the other soloist. Even though. Lalima. And it's a, t- it's a really though, terrible show, motivation. It's a terrible motivation. It doesn't make any sense. And especially in the show where they drop that storyline so quickly. Like three or four episodes in. Like, we don't even talk about that anymore. No. We, I forgot until we started, like, thinking about this PowerPoint. I forgot that that was a plot point in the first, like, two episodes. Mm-hmm. Because I... Like, if you think, it's so like, it doesn't make, it's so it, it, unnecessary. And it and doesn't so, make any sense. Like, it's, and also, like, it's not really how she gets famous in the no, show. No, it's not. In the show, like, yes, in the beginning, they go on this sort of fake Weekly Idol. Actually, it kind of reminds me more of the fake, what was the one that they did after Weekly Idol? Which one? Uh, the two Weekly Idol guys, they did the other show. Oh, yeah, Idol Room or whatever. Idol Room or whatever. It kind of reminds me of, like, both of those. Even though in this show, for some reason, you just get multiple groups at the same time. And random members of the multiple groups Not even the whole group. Not even the whole group. Multiple. And also, it's a mix of, again, if we're supposed to be in the world of this is Nugu, these are Nugu cable groups, these are the big stars, why are both the the Lalima and a pseudo EXO on the same show as Sparkling and Tea Party. That yeah, doesn't it's happen. Like, that's that's no. not how that works. No. If that's how this is gonna happen. But, like, she goes on that show. She ends up in a movie with him being one of the- uh, being Just a, a random uh, extra in the movie. Being a random extra, but then she gets promoted to, like, female lead. Or so- and I don't e- I don't know what- Yeah. That what, was very- Well, that's- Also, the so show does not understand how acting works, bizarre. by the way. Yeah. But, yeah, then that's sort of how they get famous in the show, and then their song ends up on the radio a bunch, and I'm like, okay, so are they, like... And they get famous because they debut, quote-unquote, in a very bizarre way, where they give an interview on, like, a news channel, Mm -hmm. because the CEO of their company is essentially paying them salary, which is not a thing that most idols get, and so that was they got a whole bunch of publicity through that and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they get publicity because on their debut music show performance, like, their music cuts out in the middle of it, and they sing live and whatever. So none of the reasons they get popular is due to the fact that she looks like this other girl, really. No. And then she gets exponentially more popular because of all her acting. Yeah. None of this has to do with her looking like this other other girl. And it's, and it's like, I guess it does a little bit at the beginning, but that's really before they're even a group at all. Yeah. They don't haven't even anything. debuted at that point. Because the show does make it clear that it's, like, yes, it was getting them some stuff at the beginning, but, like, they definitely got popular due to more so their own actions, so. Yeah, so it's really- a, it, This is supposed to be the main plot point of this entire show. Like, this entire show is supposed to be built around the fact that she is acting as, like, a copy of this other more famous singer, and it's just, like, not a strong enough plot point to tie a whole show together at all. yeah. And the other thing with that is that once they sort of start to, like, become a couple, that drops immediately. He doesn't Mm -hmm. learn anything from this journey. He just, like, realizes that she's not actually copying anybody and then likes her. And And she's not doing it, like, intentionally because she thinks it's an easy way to get popular. Like, it's, oh, like, that's, like, it's not her motivations here, yeah. No. And if we move on to the two other little bitch babies, Mm -hmm. um... Their main issue is that they want to be the popular member of their group. 
and Shaq's member is resentful of the main lead because he is actually the most popular member and he sees him as being able to get away with things. Mm-hmm. Which is true. He does kind of he just does get do whatever he lot. wants and then yeah. just not have no consequences. And, like, he has this whole thing going on, like, because, like, he's the leader, he feels like he should be given more things, and he has all this other responsibility on top of him because of that, and it makes him, like, fucking, I don't know, easily Paranoid? irritable, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. He just seems like a little bitch. He just complains all the time, like... Oh, a lot. And doesn't actually try to solve any issues. He solves none of the issues that arise in the show. He's barely a character. Like, he, he like, doesn't... He's barely weirdly, a presence weirdly he also doesn't cause any of the issues in this show no because again he's not really the villain no one is really no, the villain. no one really is the villain so like if you think about it like if you were to start causing problems that'd at least be something to do mm-hmm. and then sparkling little bitch baby who we realize is not the leader not the he's leader. just a member of sparkling just wants to be popular Mm-hmm. Just wants their group to be popular. And I'm he like, gets I mean, very you know, same. upset when anyone else is put in the center of the choreography. He punches the main lead in the face, I think. For no they get in a reason, fight. I don't. I don't really remember why, but I remember I think it's he punched because him. I don't. I, I think it was when the mer. I don't know. Someone punched. I genuinely can't remember. It's all about. I honestly, he, I literally have no scene. idea. I know they got into a fight and he almost gets kicked out of the group and then the AT's members are like, no, but he's learned now and he's different and he wants to stay and so then he gets to stay. That's his whole, okay. that's his whole plot That's line. his arc. That's his that's arc. That's his arc. That's what we're doing with him. That's the, those are the little bitch babies. Yep. <laughs> so then we go to the, to the Lima thing where like they make her put on this wig. I hated it. It's it a, a it's a useless plot line. plot line. Again, I can say that about any of the plot lines on this show. They were all useless. This this singer also Lolima is like I don't understand like what, what she's doing here is. at all. Because at the beginning we thought is Lolima the boa of this world? Mm-hmm. Is she like the older? I'm not calling boa old, but is she like the been doing this for years? I am Queen B. I like anything I do is gold. It seems like she's too young to be a boa, but also she feels like too old, old to be to like be... a Sunmi or like a Hana. So or I don't. Like, yeah. In a weird I don't way, know. like she, because she is constantly with the Shaxx member. So you almost assume that they came up around the same time, but she feels too old. She feels to be too a old. She feels old, way older than the members of Shaxx for sure. But they keep putting her in these situations, and also she's sort of like the CEO of this like offshoot company where she has her own trainees that she's trying to make a K-pop group out of, mm-hmm. like a sub label. And the issue is that, like, so that would mean she is older. That would mean she's been doing this for years. I don't think she's, like, quite the CEO, but she just has so much influence in it that she really controls the thing. No, because when she, when that, when they sell off that portion of the company... She's she's the one sending the trainees. She's like my yeah, but my I trainees. but I think that's just because she wants to take them with her. I don't think it's Who because they're, it's like her company. I think it's like her company. She had no perp like any say in like how it got sold. But I do think she was like, listen, I found you guys a company, and then they all decided to follow her because they she they're like she's a role model. Who knows? Them. None of this is actually ever clearly explained. No. And I also think she has a very confusing relationship with the male lead as well. Because, at because first, it seems I thought like, that, like they had a like Like is it she seems into like him? she is into him, but also he's not? not into her at all, but like I don't it's like very I don't understand it. It's just so If weird. at some point you also told me like this is a weird like family relate like are they like cousins? Like what is it why made, is like, she so interested in his life? It honestly would have made more sense if she's like his older sister. Like yeah. that's almost the type of relationship that is going on there. Like, <laughs> it's yeah, very weird. It, it would make sense if they were actually family. Mm-hmm. But for right now, it's just confusing because they also don't establish if they've been friends, for, or, like if they train together. Because she does right. feel older, right? It doesn't feel like they're like trainees or contemporaries. So who knows? Who knows? Honestly, now we get to the most useless part of the show, which is very, very sad that this is how it ended up for the two of them. Because Sangwon and San are arguably like two of the most popular members of ATs. They're and wonderful. And they were I don't turned know if maybe into, they're just not they the best actors. They were turned into just the most useless people in the world. Like, Oh, yes. 
So, in a weird way, every member of Shaq sort of gets something to do. You have the little bitch baby. You have Hui Young not looking like he wants to be there, but he has a role. He's mm-hmm. part of a couple. You get... Yep. Uh, you get um, John comedy Ho, who's duo. a comedy duo. He's doing great. And you get Yoon Ho, who is the ma- the second male lead. And then you have the other little bitch baby from Sparkling, who yep. also gets something to do. Because he's uh, a little Saan bitch, and so... and Sunghua don't do anything. They don't do anything at all. They were put here to, to fill, fill out space. Sparkling, and then that was essentially it. That's they don't the thing. do anything. And also the fact that it took us till episode 11 through a Sumpy article through a to article. know that technically Sunghua is the leader of Sparkling. Which Would I always have been able to tell that you the little all. bitch baby was. I right. assumed that because, like, what else is his purpose? I thought it. Was, I thought it was Yunho. To be honest, like I thought, I thought was he was little... the leader. See, I thought they were doing a parallel between uh, Shaq's bitch baby and Sparkling bitch baby. Is that the leaders are always assholes? Mm-hmm. I don't know, but no, it's it's Sunghua. He does nothing. Nothing. Him and Son are just there. They say like maybe five words the whole show, and are like. Just kind of there to fill out sparkling whenever sparkling needs to be there. And also, it there makes the passage of time very confusing because Son <laughs> has his hair the whole time, but also so does uh, Jong Ho. Also has that red hair the whole time, and it's apparently yeah. years of like years have passed. The thing that's so confusing is that in the first couple episodes where it's like they're all trainees at the same company, Son is like wearing a hat to like try to hide the fact that he's got the pink hair, but you, clearly he still has pink hair. Clearly you can see it. And then we do a three year time skip and there he is with the pink hair again. But then also he's in with the pink hair for, I don't know if this show took place over weeks, months, or years. No could idea. It, could not tell you. Like, I think it has to have been within one singular year, but I just don't know how long of the year. Who because knows? at the end, they do the, the year-end awards, and we know that the is Tea that Party- Is that year-end awards? It is, because it's they have a discussion about how Tea Party is up for new best rookie girl group debut. So you're telling me that they did an entire drama filmed and aired it within a year? I don't know Come how on. long, I don't know how long of the year, like, it could have been months of that year, like, I don't know when, like, they debuted, so it could have been, like, Who one knows? month to 11 months, anywhere in between then. <laughs> I'm hoping it was 11 months, because they, that was a jam-packed year for them. hmm But yeah, no, these two were useless. Completely useless, and it's very sad. They, like, were completely wasted here. Like, absolutely were just here and wasted their time. <laughs> So now we get to what the is this a selling point of the show the fact that there's couples I guess it should be but it really isn't So there are three three main main couples mm-hmm. We get our main our two main leads the yeah, bland bitch 1 and bland bitch 2 Um probably the worst couple on this oh, show Oh they're to be by honest. far they're the terrible. worst couple on this show they're awful Every like, single time they talk to each other, I want to, like, bang my head into a wall. Because they are so emotionless and just, not, like, absolutely also, nothing. also, like, weirdly emotionless, but also very awkward. They're like, so they, awkward. They, like, like well, half the time met. they don't look each other in the eye half the time. And, like, the way the show is edited, it's like you never see... The, it's like the way that they edit a lot of their conversations is you'll see... One of them is facing towards you, and the other one has their back towards the camera, and then we'll switch back and forth, so we're only seeing one of or, their facial expressions at the same time. Or, 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 or they'll do the thing where they're sitting side In by side, yeah. and they're both, and they're both staring at the camera, so they're not actually even, lo- it's not even implied that they're looking at each other, they're just looking no. straight forward, and I'm like, look at each other. You're having it's an like, emotional please. conversation. And they go through, like, a breakup, but then they get back together, and it's, like, the most emotionless thing ever. It's just, like, they seem like they couldn't be bothered, really, with any of this. No, they seem like they actually do not care about each other. Mm-hmm. And then I don't have... understand why they like each other to begin with, to be perfectly no. honest, because it's not made clear at all why no. they No, and then you together. also get that very confusing, this show, for some reason, has decided to do epilogues at the end of every, every, um, episode. Yeah. And it is also implied that they went to school together before they yes. became trainees, even though somehow, none of them ever mention it. And also they were very like high schoolers, so you definitely like would remember it, like high school, middle school. Yeah, like you clearly would remember. <laughs> These are not like <laughs> elementary school kids. These are well into their teens. Like yeah. unless uh, like it's on, it's never said that either of them had like a traumatic brain injury with amnesia or some shit. Right. No, they would remember. 
-hmm. And also, like... They had, it's not even, like, that they were just sort of past each other in the hallways. No, they had, like, deep convert. They had, like, deep, at least deep one deep conversation, conversation yeah. that, like, changed the course of their lives of, like, hey, maybe I do want to be an idol. Mm-hmm. And it's very odd that, one, it's never mentioned in the actual show, and yeah. two, like... Neither of them acknowledge no acknowledges that it happened ever. No. So very then bad. we get to second couple. Mm-hmm. Technically second couple. So Technically, I guess, yeah. Yunho is the second male lead. He does mm-hmm. very little. He is friends with this... So her... So main girl and Yunho and all of the sparkling members were in a company together. Then she gets traded like it's some kind of football team to mm-hmm. this other company. And then she joins Tea Party. So they're no longer yes. in a company together, but they're still good friends. Yep. And he likes her. Has and always then, liked her. It's a childhood friend thing. Good guys finish last type yeah. of shit. And then you have, uh, Nyan, no, Nyan? Yeah, yeah Nyan. Nyan, from formerly of Friston, who just likes, uh, Yun- Yunho. Yep. And, you know, and she's- he is obviously very still into the in female love. lead for yes. a long time. Until at some point in time, I don't know what, he realizes that that's, like, useless. Not gonna happen. Continuing to do that. And so they throw the two of them together at the end. Yeah. With absolutely no, like, backstory or anything. Weirdly, like, she gets mad at him at one point because he's, like, asking her how she's doing. He's trying to be friends with her. And then yeah. she's just like, fuck, like, fuck you. You know I like you. You can tell that. And he's like, stop with this bullshit. And then, like, three episodes later, we cut back to the storyline, and now and he now likes her. And now they're just together. And I'm just like, we were given absolutely no sort of or development I, Or on they're, this like, in the process of getting together. No, and I'm like, absolutely when, nothing. When, when, why, when, what, no conversation We were suddenly, was like, halfway through the last episode, and all of a sudden they were flirting with each other and, like, kind of Yeah, they're, they're sending flirty texts, and I'm like, wait, what? When what are, we, it's like, what are we doing? What, what, what? Why was I not informed of this? And it's we like, I get that that's, it's like pretty, like, obvious that that, like, was maybe gonna happen, but in the webcomic, I don't think they get together, really. I think he is just sad and alone, alone. a lot of it, so I was expecting, like, it, they could just leave him sad like, and both or of them they sad could, and alone. Like, or they could have, like, like, not gone as far as be like, hey, we're gonna get together, but like, you know, inch toward that direction, like, turn in that direction give us some like Not more like, development here first like give me at least like two more interactions together like make them be together. friends first because it really seemed like she was not on board with him at all that fight was like very like hey you don't like me i can tell yeah. now somehow he likes her and i'm like what and happened like, your feelings are, change on a doing? dime what are we doing here and then a uh, tea party really is a group just filled with love so much love in Tea Party. <laughs> because the third member of Tea Party gets together with Hui Young, who looks like he wants to die. Hui <laughs> Young does not enjoy being on this show at all. So <laughs> their storyline is sort of happening in, in like, a separate bubble. Yes. It has nothing to do with the real plot. They get not about, plot. I, like, the two of them together get about 30 seconds of screen time, like, every episode, like, episode six through the end of the show. Yeah, <laughs> That's the development we get And that 30 seconds, which leads up to maybe, like, two and a half minutes, is really, like, just sets up a storyline of, like, she, for some reason, Decides she to wants to learn studio. how to, she decides, so she's recording a song for somebody yes. and then decides that... She wants to learn how to produce music, and the guy Good she's for asking her. for help and lessons is also shares a producer. studio with yes, yeah, shares a studio with Hui Young, who is just around. Yeah, he also has this studio. It's also his. Do we actually ever get an implication that Hui Young is the one that writes all of Shax's music? No, no, it, it he definitely just is, is in the in the web comic. Like he is there. He's also a main vocal in the web comic. Um, I don't think they were gonna give Hui Young they, male yeah, vocal Hui Young's not that's not what Hui Young is oh, doing boy. here. Um, but it's in in the web comic. It's implied that he hears her sing and falls in love with her voice, and then immediately decides that he needs to like write a song for her to sing. And that's kind of how it progresses. This is not how this works. This is not how this works in this one. In how this it, one, it's not. He just sort of Go goes there, sees her, falls in love, acts like a dumbstruck idiot, 
and just kind of like shows, just, like, just keeps showing up at the studio when he, she, he knows she'll be there, but she like, then, doesn't like doesn't enjoy him anything. being there. Yeah. Well, he also doesn't really say anything. He just sort of stands there awkwardly, and I also, just also at one what point insulted her. Yeah, it does unintentionally times. insulted her. Yeah, and then is like, oh, why doesn't? And then it's just like slowly they gain. Oh, and then slowly there is this stupid plot line where yep. the show again does not understand how K-pop works. Where on this fake weekly idol, these random idols get paired together to do a duet for some reason. That's not how that works. Yeah, and you don't even have to get paired up with other people like. Our, fun, our favorite comedy duo, which we'll talk about next, two members of Shaq's get paired together. Yep. And then you have uh, Lalima and our main boy paired uh-huh. together. You get Yoon Ho and the female lead. And then these, and then she gets paired with a different person. A random person. A random we, person who we've never who seen. suddenly decides, like, he can't be there. He can't do it anymore or something. There was really no clarification on why this other man can't be there. Like, and it was, it's not even like this was drawn out. This happened within, like, the, they get together, the next scene with her, he's immediately already gone or going. Yeah. And then Huyoung just happens to be there I'll and, like, gonna, step and in Huyoung's and be like, like I'll, I'll gonna do, do it. it now. Yeah. And then he gets like, why, <laughs> why did we add this scene that was entirely unnecessary? <laughs> it was no Why need. did we need to go in this circle? It's also, like a dog I don't chasing think, its tail. I don't think Huyoung is allowed to just decide he's gonna be on this show and sing this song now. Like, I don't think that's a thing he can do. Like... Apparently it is, and then they sing a terrible. I mean, all, most of the songs, except for a comedy duo, a terrible are bad. ballad. Yeah, they're bad ballads, and this was like bad eighties or bad nineties. Yeah, and then we get the comedy duo who just do Troublemaker, and they're iconic. Iconic. They but, would say, yeah, the best couple on the show. <laughs> yes, because this is definitely not the best couple on the show. Hui Young looks entirely disinterested in this entire show. He looks <laughs> maybe slightly not as dead. In yeah. the scenes with her where he actually has to, you know, look alive. Mm-hmm. But, like, for the most part, he is just not having it. And I the agree way I would I like, am is disinterested same. in the show, too. What I would like to believe is happening is that, you know, we lose Chani um, and the group. And then once Chani left, we undecided he hated everyone else here. And decided he didn't want to associate with them anymore. He realizes how fake this group is. How it is an imitation of a real K-pop group. Mm-hmm. And was like, you know what? My I'm friend making is gone. Money. My best friend is gone. And we have apparently decided he is dead because we do not speak of him. Yep. But, like, not even in the way that, like, K-pop idols won't speak about their former members. In the way that, like, this former member has disappeared off the face of the planet and no one knows where he is. No one. Absolutely no one knows where he is. Like, this is, like, a kidnapping situation. Like, it's Mm -hmm. possible. Like, he could have been kidnapped. For all they know. Yep. But yes, uh... Bad couples all around. Except yeah. for one. One. The comedy yeah. duo we didn't know we needed. They're great. They're great. They're honestly really so funny. It's so this is John Ho of ATs and then yes. Yuri. They are their only purpose of them is they go around and do stuff together and they're here to be like comic relief and they're great. I love them. They're the only good part of this show. They are somehow cast on a sitcom with the female lead, which mm-hmm. again I want to point out that this girl apparently in the year of her debut did one drama that won that one movie that apparently was winning awards. Yeah, debuted in a K-pop group and starred in a sitcom, all yep. with three members of the same boy group. Yep, that's yep, how yep. K-pop works and acting apparently. Yep. But, um, Cause they, it was like, it, there's a lot of random, there's like a very big part of the drama in the middle that is just about everyone acting because there's also like another one that the main male lead does that is also kind of a disaster. Oh, we'll talk about that one. Yep. But yes, these two are wonderful. They're great. Uh, I Jonko love has had this hair for apparently four years. Yep, he has. God, his scalp, but it's fine. Mm-hmm. And they are the best couple in the show. They're wonderful. They they're great. This is an everlasting friendship. They they're do troublemaker cute. together, and it's hilarious. It's it's the best part of that 
episode is them covering Troublemaker. And that's a very long episode because we see all four of those performances. We get to just full. watch those performances, and I'm just like, this is not a thing we needed to see in this show. Like we in full. needed, like if you wanted to put all the full performance like on YouTube, sure. I maybe needed maybe thirty seconds per performance. I did not need. I the did full not song. enjoy it at all. No, it was not fun. No. This one I enjoyed watching the full performance, but all the other ones really brought the whole experience. This down. cover of them doing Troublemaker is on the official OST too, which I find very funny. It is very funny. So, do we want to go to technically the ma- the the own the closest thing that this show has to a plot? Sure. So this is Shani's dead girlfriend. <laughs> Yep, this is really the the center plot point, although we don't address it until the last two episodes we of the show. We address it really. in, like, the first Episode two. one, and the first two and the last two, really. Exactly. So, so this group called Tea Party was originally supposed to debut as a group called Omega X, not Omega X. Omega, Omega X. Three. <laughs> Omega 3. <laughs> My apologies to Omega X. You do not deserve to be a part of. You do not deserve to be put in this conversation. You're Omega wonderful. X is way deserve way more than this show. Formal formal apology to Omega X. I apologize. Yes, but Omega Three, mm-hmm. and this random girl was supposed to be in it. Yeah, but then she uh, jumps off a bridge. Yep. No, she leaves the group. She, she leaves, leaves the, group, the group and then female and then jumps lead off the gets, bridge and then female lead joins the group. Yes. I, the timeline of this is not clear because she le- she leaves the group, goes off and does something. The female lead joins the group, and they the day of their debut, the yes. day that Omega Three is about to debut and about, about to, go, to on go on stage, stage on their M countdown, like like they're about to debut. She jumps off a bridge, and the news report comes in that she's dead. And yep. then immediately they just sweep them away and they don't actually debut. And my thing with that will always be, how the hell is this group not labeled the K-pop group that had to re-debut after a member killed themselves? It's really fascinating. How is that not, a, like, because they debut with a new name, but the yeah. song sounds almost identical because we hear the Omega 3 the song. The song is the identical. same song, just remixed, yeah. Yeah, it's a remix of the same song and it's not even trying. And it's the same three people. The most unrealistic thing about this entire show is how all of the events around this are just completely forgotten by not only the characters on the show, but, like, the public as well. The world does not care. Because what happens here is that we find out later in the show that Chani was dating this girl who jumped off the bridge. And Chani, at this point, completely disappears from the group shacks. And their company really doesn't give them any type of an explanation other than why Unju's not in the group anymore. And that's all we get. He disappears mid concert because he leaves the concert because he gets like, yeah, the message that she's about to like jump off a bridge. And also, for some reason, at at this point, he had his cell phone on him when he was about to go on stage, which is yeah, not which how is that works. Questionable, yeah, it's number questionable. One. But also the fact that like this isn't like when a member when a member leaves a group, you kind of have an idea like you know former members of EXO. There's multiple of them. We know where they are. Yes. There's former members of a bunch of big K-pop groups. There's former members of Stray Kids. There's former members of, like, Monsta X. There's a lot of former members of decently sized K-pop groups. Yeah. TBXQ, Super Junior. We know that they're not, like, dead. Yeah. We don't maybe hear from them as often, but, but we you know, know that they're they not are. gone. Yeah. They have not disappeared off the face of the planet. And even if they disappear for a while, like, it's not like it's active police investigation worthy of where the f- Because we know that Shaq has Sasangs. Yes. We know that for a fact because we see them. They have a fan club, yes. They have a fan club. That follows them around everywhere. Why- These girls, like, people have gotten BTS's passport photos. Somehow. Mm-hmm. You think that we can't fi- like, you think that these things are not gonna roam to the ends of the earth to make sure that he's not just This is an EXO level K-pop group where one member is dropping off the face of the planet and the only person who seems to care or remember about it is some obscure K-pop journalist. And I'm like By the way, this obscure K-pop journalist throughout the entire show does not a thing. Not a thing. Does nothing. nothing. He's also no- a completely useless character in this show, generally. Yeah. She's here to remind us every that once Chani in a while exists. that Chani exists. And trust me, um, 
trust me, I know that Channy exists. Half Within, of our motto this entire show where's was, Channy? where's Channy? Because we said Channy, that every episode. Channy is, like, one of the highest billed actors on this show. Channy, to give you a perspective, in True Beauty, Channy was in the show for maybe, like, he was in that show pretty recently. Most of the flashbacks I think he's, him. he's actually in, like, seven or eight of he's the episodes. He's in seven or eight episodes yeah. for maybe a scene or two per episode. So it was actually yeah. a pretty decent chunk of that episode. But he's booked as a cameo because, again... He's not the star, and he's mostly in flashbacks. Yeah. He is about, like, fourth or fifth build. He's, like, build. fourth build in this show. He's, he's probably in this show a... about as much as he was in True Beauty. He's probably- I think he's in this show less than he was in True Beauty, to be honest. He's in less episodes than he was in True Beauty, for sure. <laughs> oh, yes. Like, it's not- it makes no sense to me how he was that high build. No. He's higher built he than Jong Ho, I think. The thing that's funny, though, is he is, the like, the most popular actor this show has is Channy. Like, Oh, yeah. I also think that's why he's not in this show a lot. You think Channy he wants has to be better a part things of this? to do. I feel bad that this is now just, like, a scratch on Channy's acting career because he had to waste his time on all of this. But I guess I get it because Channy does get cast as a lot of these, like, really sad, like, sad, sad boy. boy or, like, sad boy and, like, Murder, sad boy with a dead, dead girlfriend. Role. Yeah, that's like a this chatty is, role. Look, sad boy with a dead girlfriend, that's a chatty role, like, 100%. But, like... Like, that's the second one, that's the second, that's the second uh, dead girlfriend Chaney's had. Yep. He's already been dead. He's already yep. been a vampire. Yep. He's already killed a man. He's gonna be an exorcist later He's this year. He's gonna be an exorcist. Like, mm-hmm. we... Chaney's going through all them death rolls. Yeah, he should have been a doom at your service. I'm like, I do get it in a way, because like, yes, that's a Chaney role. Like, that's a hundred percent a Chaney role. But also, Look, this show is so bad that like, it doesn't I, deserve I Chaney. He, she deserves better than this show. Chaney did not deserve the disrespect, and this is not deserved to taint Chaney's acting career. If he was yeah. a cameo in this show, yeah. like that would have been fine, because it's like, oh, fine cameos. Who cares? Right, da, da, da. That's right. not a smirch on your acting career. The fact that he's that high build of a supporting actor is upsetting. It's very upsetting. That's it's actually upsetting. kind of a smirch of because his acting I was career. expecting I was expecting him to be in the show a lot more than he actually was, because also I think this is the most interesting plot line the show has, and the fact that it's they the covered only it interesting so... plot line in this show. And it's, I think a lot of people felt that way too. And I was like, why didn't the show spend more time on this plotline of their couple? Because they're the most interesting couple on the show too, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also the fact that it's the only sort of commentary that they're attempting to do on the idol industry at all. But the fact that it's so false flat and they don't say anything. Mm -hmm. No consequences are met. Nothing is changed. No one and, actually gives a shit that this girl- Like, no one remembers that this girl died. No, and the other thing that bothers me a lot is that they, they had a chance to make a commentary, but they are talking about it in the most, like, vague. obscure, vague way possible. That it's hard- It's, like, impossible to figure out what actually happened to this girl. Because in a way, it's making it sound like there was a forced prostitution. Yes. But by the end of the show, it sounds like it's fabricated- forced yes. prostitution and she was just like didn't want to be associated with that and it made her sad but i'm just like you had a, a chance weird... to do something yeah. better with that because again we sure. know that there's so much going on in the idol industry the idol industry is dark there's always these stories coming out and they're like there's yeah. truth to them and the problem is like this show had this golden opportunity with I think the other issue is that they actually have idols in the industry, and it's like, these kids yeah. want careers. I don't yep. know what you, like, don't bite the hand that feeds you, I guess. But, like, right. if you're gonna do that, do what Extracurricular did. Don't hire idols. Don't make, yeah, don't put idols don't, on it. Like, yeah. if, sure, like, over, like, make the singing a little bit worse. Sure, make the dancing, again, mm-hmm. I feel like an actor could have done this dancing. These idols are going at maybe 40%, like, yeah. sure, make the parts of the show, like, the singing and the dancing less realistic. Mm-hmm. But if you want to go dark and show the dark parts of the idol industry, you can't do that with real idols who are still active. Yeah, like you can't, if, really. You I can't, mean, Channy, Channy could probably do it, but that's about it. I don't know. Because Channy already does things like this. Weirdly, I don't know, because Channy's still an active idol. I don't know if he could do a show specifically about being an idol. Maybe. But I, I think, feel like he does, like, enough of these, like, darker yeah, roles that a lot of idols can't do. Yeah. That it's, like... Maybe, like, yeah, like maybe could. Channy could keep his role. Yeah. If he's not actively, like, being any... Like, I think that they could have done this if they just didn't use idols. Like, you know these idols aren't gonna do certain things, because they so, can't. 
Right. So this plot line in the webcomic is a lot more convoluted, but a lot more interesting at the same time. Because what Ooh. happens is that, so the main lead has an older brother. Uh-huh. Um, for some reason is evil. I don't know why, because I didn't get to this point. I had this explained to me by someone who did read it, but also didn't remember it that well. But he has an older brother. He's evil. Somehow he colludes with this girl who's um, Chani's girlfriend. What? Gets her to, like, get Chani addicted to drugs what? or something. Oh, and then yeah. gets Chani into a drug scandal. And um, it's, like, it's very convoluted. But is also she still the fact Chani's that his dead girlfriend, though? Yeah, the, that whole thing still happens when okay. she dies and okay. everything. But, like, it, the, the fact that there was, like, drugs involved, I think, makes, that makes it a more so interesting That makes so much more sense, story because, line. again, how many drug scandals has K-pop already had? The I think that's actually... I think that's maybe why they had to take out the drugs is because a trainee with a drug scandal is already a thing that happened and then they probably Multiple didn't want to go times. that direction. <laughs> yeah. Multiple times trainees mm-hmm. with drug problems, but like it's fine. Get help kids. Drugs drugs are bad. Yeah. But um no. I think that this show just took out you can again this is one of those plot lines where like you can see it trying you can see that it wants to go in this direction and then it realizes either it doesn't have the time or doesn't have the balls to actually like do it yeah because it's like a lot of things that annoys me about this is it's like tell me about it's like a lot of articles are saying about oh how it's exposing the dark side of the k-pop industry and i'm like no because number one a lot of your descriptions aren't accurate number two k-pop's a lot darker than what even is even being shown in the show to begin with exactly And so, like, you're not even hitting any of the, like, the things that people who are into K-pop are not already aware of. Like, we know there's a trainee system. We know that there's internal conflict between groups a lot of the time. And we We know know that that there's, like, people have to be on diets. And we, we, like, a lot of people know this already. Like, you're not telling me anything new. And if you're really gonna go with it, go for it. Like, go with the darker stuff that's, like, rumors and, like, not, like... The ab- like we know that there's physical abuse in oh K-pop. yeah we, we that's proven fact that there's physical abuse and like the the whole like aspect of the favors and the sexual abuse that's a part yeah. of K-pop. If you're gonna actually go for it, don't go with the surface level stuff that everyone knows. And if you're a K-pop fan, you already accept. Mm-hmm. Show what the reality of like the darker stuff that's like more you know rumored. Yeah, this is fiction. You're not actually accusing anyone of anything unless you are. The thing that it, with this show is, is I think it's definitely, t- it was too light of a drama for them to even think about going in that direction. So I think instead of and giving us a half assed thing yeah. that was it, it's a completely it. inaccurate, just don't even cover it. Like, yeah. I just, I'd rather just you not go that direction if like, you're if not you, going to do it. Any, if you're like, not well. going to do it well, don't do it. Just leave, yeah. just leave it. Just drop it. We don't mm-hmm. need it. Yep, yep. So I think we've covered the how this is just everything about this show is just like not how the k-pop industry works no not at all nope one thing that really was it i remember is that when they were kicking out the one member of sparkling um because he punched the other guy in the face or something Mm -hmm. they were holding auditions to replace him with trainees and i'm like that's not a thing that you like, do is you kick out a member because he had a scandal and then you immediately replace them with somebody else like that's not that's a not thing how that works like someone can voluntarily leave the group and then you can replace them with two or three people right that's but it's happened like, in it's K-pop. not like you're hiring someone to be like an actual just replacement like there's no rule set in place that sparkling has to be four people like, it can be three it's yeah. probably better they off could three be rather six. than it could like, be, who knows yeah you could add three more Go it get would make, the other, honestly, go it get, makes more sense if they kick out a kid and they add, like, more people. Like, that's yeah. the thing that would make more sense than them just hiring a one-to-one replacement for him. Exactly. You can't hire one. You have to have the buffer or two or three. Like, you need to you need to go hire, like, Mingi, Hangjun, and Yosung. Yeah, just get the rest of ATs. Just get the rest of ATs. It's yeah. fine. Just make yeah. an AT subunit and then Jong Ho can join later. Oh, yes. No, well, after he, like, you know... Breaks up with his comedy duo partner. Sure. I, I guess he can- he can bring him along too, I guess, you know? <laughs> it's it's more members. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so then we have just the fact that- a, a thing that really bothered us. There's another one. Because the there's not enough. issue. Yeah. 
a thing that particularly we were like watching the the scenes with the sasangs and just being like what in the world is happening because it's, it's absolutely ridiculous that the fan club is allowed to be as crazy as they are and treated as if it's completely normal yeah like again not saying that their portrayal of the fandom is wrong fandoms are crazy they are crazy are dumb but the fact, are stupid. there's this one moment that really gets to me where they break oh, into yes. their hotel, the hotel room they're at, and they are just chilling in the hallway of the hotel. Right in front of their, his door. Where his room is. And the manager comes out and sees them and just lets them stay there. Not even lets them stay there, but the way he does it is by telling them, okay, go check the hallways. Go, like, he sends them on a fucking mission. And it's so mission, bizarre. Like, they because, work for him. I know, and like, the thing what? that's bizarre is that because- no, you the, call security. The reason they're trying to get around them is because the female lead is in his bedroom right now for- because Stupid he, she, reason. For some reason that doesn't make any sense. And they're for trying to get her out. comedy reasons, yes. And they're trying to get her out, but they see the fan clubs in the hallway. And I'm like, you could literally just go out there and fucking kick them out of the hotel, maybe. Instead of us trying to, like, do this bizarre comedy act to get her out of the room. Like, yes. Like, that's what a normal person would do. Yes. And then also we have these moments where, like, these sasangs are just, like... I believe it's when they think that the the two leads are dating through yeah. a miscommunication before they're actually dating. Yeah. And this is a whole new story about it, and the Sasangs are angry, and they're trying to boycott uh, Which, I Shaxx. mean, you know, that's a realistic that's thing. True. That's true. That's true. They would do that's that. That's how that works. But the members of Shaxx go outside and confront, not even confront, just bow an apology to them. And, like, and have, like, like, a face-to-face what? face conversation with them there. Yeah, just and I'm like, like no EXO level K pop group is out here giving like a in person apology to these people like who are just outside your apartment. It's like absolutely thing. ridiculous. Oh, it's nonsense. I hated it, and it's just the issue of um, what is this also trying? Because again, if this is a deep show trying to say something about K pop, what is this trying to say? What is the, uh, thing I should be getting out of this? Right. Because it's almost as if it's, like, they don't want to upset the fan. It's, like, weird. It's, like, they're trying to make it, like, they're trying to normalize that, like, the crazy fandom thing is okay. Like, it's very bizarre. And it's not. The way that they're being presented. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, they're never presented as a negative. Yeah. Which is the sheer minimum. They're not even presented as a nuisance. They're just presented. They're presented as a thing that's like, oh, we have to appease them. It's almost like and comical like, what? in a weird way. That's sometimes how yeah. they show up. It's They're like very scared bizarre. of them in a yeah. weird way. They want them to be. I'm like, so this is trying to say nothing. Yeah, it's terrible. It's not saying anything. Not at all. So now we get back to the fact that all these people are actors. Yes. All so, these idols are actors. That's- so many of them. There's, like, a whole section, like, right in the middle of the drama where it a lot of them get into acting because- it's focus to focus. Yes. Have more to acting than to so being there's an a, idol. So the first one we get is we get the, fe- the male lead is in this weird historical drama. They give him a horrendous beard, number one. Oh, it's very bad. And then the female lead is in an, ex- an extra in that show and then gets promoted to, like, female lead or something Which else. Which, again, so that's we not have how that. that works. Because, no. again, if you are an extra, you don't just halfway through the shoot become the female lead. No. So they have that. And then there's another one. It's a weird police show. Um, the, fem- the male lead, I think, is the main antagonist of the show or something. Or is he the main protagonist? He is maybe the protagonist who's, like, evil or, like, a bad guy or something. Because he's he getting chased a... by the cops. Oh, yeah, no, and yeah. And yoon be... Oh, yoon is a, a cop. cop. Yeah. Yeah, yoon for some reason, this rookie boy group in a Nugu K-pop group is cast as a police it's officer. cast as a cop, yeah. <laughs> and okay. then And then, <laughs> in this scene, they let him do his own stunt driving. Yeah, they let the main over. lead. Yeah, the main lead is... Stunt driving a car. And he flips this car and he, and he flips goes it over and gets into a car accident and goes into a coma for a hot second. He's fine. And then we have Nothing a coma ever plot line for like an episode and a half. Even though he he just doesn't lose, <coughs> doesn't get amnesia. He's no. just sort of like 
Thank He's God we didn't do the amnesia. Fine. Oh my like, God. Could you imagine the show with an amnesia plot line? The show didn't have enough time to put in an amnesia plot line. <laughs> like, it apparently had time for a lot of other bullshit. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it had time. But also, so number one, you don't let your, your, your lead, so a lead, so you're being idol and whatever. You don't let, so an idol wouldn't get cast in that role in the first place, number one. I mean, not unless drama. you're, like, a Dio type. Dio or Chani. Yeah, Dio, Chani, or, like, a Tekken, or you've been yeah, doing and this like, for years and P.O. you're trying to change is in, your image. P.O. is in crime dramas now, but, like, you gotta be old and, like, established for that. It's um, not number implied one, that he is old or established. No. Number two, you don't let them stunt drive. You don't let them drive stunt drive a car chase, <laughs> number two. Mm-hmm. Like, absolutely would not let even an actor stunt drive a car chase like that's just ridiculous mm-hmm. um and number three a yunho also like that's a weird role to cast like a rookie actor in is as a, as a police officer but also and especially like, in like an action crime drama is like you don't get cast as a police officer like that's a weird first role for an actor not just that but like if you're looking at sparkling and you're looking at the concept sparkling has yeah that does not work with the because again a lot of times if you're a rookie actor no matter what age you are you're going to be playing a high school role you're going to be playing max a college role it's going to be a cute show and you're going to be a supporting actor you're not going to be a supporting cop i can see i can see you i can see them being cast as a cop but in a very different like genre show than the one that they're doing like it's a comedy cop Right. He is a comedy Or, man. like, a slice of life, like, or police academy or something. Like, but it's not like we're having a car chase and you have to have a fist fight with the male lead of this other group on a show. <laughs> because I that's know. the other part that's very funny is they, they, obviously they're doing it for the drama, but they, like, Yunho has to fist fight the male, like, male lead. Also just, lets like, them essentially do their own stunts and they go full out on each other. And I'm like, that's not, not how, doing a, that's acting. not how acting works. That's no. not. You can seriously injure yourself. Do not hit each other in the head, please. Uh Uh-huh. This is not a time to get out your pent-up aggression. This Mm -hmm. is professionalism. Please. I think that's- Oh, then there's a sitcom, but the sitcom is just, like, doing sitcom things, so it's whatever. The sitcom is dropped immediately after it's introduced. We don't see a lot of anything involving the sitcom, honestly. No, and it's dropped immediately, so it's like, either it was a very short sitcom- or the only they thing, just forgot to keep writing about I it. I think the only purpose of the sitcom is to get, like, the female lead's interaction with the comedy duo a couple handful of times, and that's yeah. what Yeah, and it also establishes that the comedy duo is willing to help the two main leads, because yeah. in this sitcom, apparently female lead and Jong Ho are siblings. Right. Because of course they are. And other comedy man that's just the actor, he is Jong Ho's friend, who apparently likes her. Yeah. Which is fine. And then, like, you just get, you know, fun comedy scenes about the male lead being, like, don't think, but also explaining how you act like you're in love with her. Oh my god, can we talk about this this. this sitcom where it's, like, she's dating, like, her teacher who's, like, 30 or some shit? Oh, yes! Yeah. (laughs) One of the sitcom plots of the one- Yeah, we get one episode of the sitcom where they're filming it, and, like, main lead goes there to see her. And apparently they decided the male love interest for that episode was gonna be her teacher. And they genuinely make- not even in the comedy sitcom way where, hey, I like my hot teacher yeah. and nothing happens because he's an adult. No. There's, no. like, actual, like, thing flirting. And I'm like, what are we it's like doing? They're, it's so weird. And I'm like, why? Why are we doing And I get it's for the... It's for the jealousy, but I'm like, why are, Why did we have to do this specifically for the jealousy? Like, it couldn't be, like, just another student. We had to go, 30-year-old teacher? Okay. Yeah. Sure. And then apparently other comedy duo just sort of has to look on and, like, weird- They just have uh, to be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And accept that this is happening. So, I think we've sort of touched on this, but the passage of time in this show does not actually make sense. It's absolutely impossible to tell how long things are happening. Like, how much time there is in between events that are happening. We kind yeah. of have the general idea it's supposed to be happening over about a year after we get past, like, the first episode and there's a three-year time skip, but after that, it's like, who who even knows? Who knows? Because if you told me the show take place over, like, two years, 
The only thing that gives me thing is like that they never have a comeback. For two debut era groups, they never yes. have any comebacks. Tea Party gets one song, Sparkling gets one song, Shex gets one song in this year, and that's it. That's all we got. Yep. Apparently that's all that they could afford. And I'm like, well, that makes sense, because I don't think we've said this before, but the Tea Party company has run out of a coffee shop. It is. So, no, actually so, run tea out Party, of a company so Tea Party's company is um, run by a guy who used to be, like, a former manager of Shaq's or something, and then after the Unju incident, he left and was doing other stuff, and then for some reason, randomly decided one day he was gonna pick up the ashes of Omega-3 and <laughs> try to put them in a girl group again for I don't know what reason. Um, but because he is a singular man, he runs the whole company out of the basement of a coffee shop. Yep. And so the press is- studios in the basement, then they're just coffee shop on the top, and then that is the company. That's it. That's, That's all we it. got. Mm-hmm. And, like, like when the group starts actually getting popular, like this coffee shop, like the fans come outside and like they this coffee stand shop- outside the coffee shop with like signs and shit. But yeah. also the fact that like I don't know how they distinguish a fan from a non-fan from like you someone go who inside, just wants to there buy coffee. Just, there are people there, and I'm like that would be it. I would not go to this coffee shop if I just had random people screaming outside of a coffee shop to. If I just want, like, an afternoon latte. What's even funnier is that, like, all of the the groups end up under this company except by the end of the for, show. Because Shax leaves for, their company. Uh, sparkling is not. But Shax leaves their company and signs under the Tea Party company. And then towards the end of the show, La Lima leaves her company and brings her three, her group of trainees with her, signs under that company. And so there's, like, four groups now. Who have to share Out a basement practice shop. room at a coffee shop? Like, it's not even that they expand. No, the last scene is them at this coffee shop all together. And then Sparkling and also like, just comes and doing? hangs out here as well. I'm like, okay, this is a great hangout spot, but, like, where are you practicing? And then it's just everyone, you have, like, fans of all of the groups just standing outside the coffee Apparently shop with signs. Well, there's like a well, there's just, like, a meeting of, like, all of these popular K-pop groups happening but inside this coffee shop. But also the fact that this is a coffee shop, so all the windows, there's, like, massive glass windows because it's a very, you know, it's a coffee shop. It's bright, it's lit well. Yeah. And, like, these fans are just, like, watching this. Like, they can see them. They're watching it's- people walk into the coffee shop. Like, they know that everyone's in there. Like They know. And the wind, like, the curtains aren't closed. People know. Yeah. It is, it is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So, I think we've sort of established that in this entire show, nothing has happened. Nothing. Nothing at all has happened. Literally nothing has happened. No one has really, like, the plot is just non-existent in that it's like, it brings up plot lines and is like, maybe we'll talk about this and then just does it. It it has like about, it has too many plot lines and then gives resolution to like none of them. But it doesn't even develop any of them. It just sort of states It states that there are things happening. This is present. And then I'm like, cool, are you gonna say something about it? No. Yeah, great. Uh, You wanna do anything with it? No. No. You wanna even just sort of begin to maybe establish it? No. No. We're fine. It is, it's got a lot of problems. Um, <laughs> more problems that I even, like, can think of off the top of my head. Like, there's just so much wrong with the budget and just the writing and the characters and, like, the portrayal of K-pop. It's like, really? I don't think they did anything here correct. Like, I don't think there's a single thing in this entire show that was, like, I thought they did well. <laughs> I don't know, because even, like, the parts that we're giving props to, like, the the comedy duo, there's better comedy duos. There are. You want to know it's a better comedy duo from a show? Other iconic comedy duo, comedy couple from Gank Your Heart. Oh, yeah, love them. Love what them. What a great better comedy, comedy duo. duo. Yes. Better comedy duo. And they were actually allowed to be in love. Yes, they were. All right, so... Uh... I I do want to talk about this where the deck the decorations in the so in the tour room. This is something that specifically kept annoying me. You know that I kept bringing it up, and I'm like, wait a minute, I see more of them. Of sort of, we we get a lot of scenes in the male leads room. Yes. And what I began to notice in the male leads room is that there's a lot of photos. 
I mean, this is a thing in all a lot of K dramas where you'll just have photos of yourself. Yeah. There's a wall in the Shacks dorm that just has a big painting that says the word Shacks on it, as if we were forget who lived there. Uh huh. It's fine. I mean, you know, I usually remember that I live at a place, but good to see the group name. You know why I'm here. Uh-huh. Good to know I didn't walk into the wrong apartment. But specifically in the male lead's room, he just has. I noticed that there's one at the beginning. I noticed one big photo that just has looked like a promo image. If you look in the corner, it says Shacks at the in the corner. So I knew it was a promo image. And yeah. then I the more of the room, you get it from different angles, and I see another picture of himself. That is another promo image. There's, I think, at least four or five photos of himself that are just promo images. This man just lives in a room with photos of himself on the wall, like, everywhere. Like, photos of no other person. Only himself. Only which again, himself. I've seen a lot of dramas where, like, you've seen the dramas where, like, you walk in and one person just has a giant mural of themselves. Right. That's fine, but usually there's other decor. No, in this, only no, him. Only photos of myself. But and not even, like, candids. Not no. even, like. This is just, like, their pro. He, like, bought it out. He was given it one of their albums and then, like, put the poster from the album of himself up on the wall or something. Like a frame or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. It's even just the fact of, like, it's. It's not even, like, because a lot of times those big murals will just be, like, a glamour shot. No. Right. This always has the Shaq's logo or and the Shaq's also, name in the corner. And it's, like, all sizes of photos, too. Oh, yeah. Like, you get, like, a big one on the wall. You get, like, small little frames on his desk. Like, there's a lot of them. Yeah. So It's many. a bit much. Oh, yeah. Uh. So now we get... I think we've ranted enough. We have. So now we get to talk about what two, we have two categories of recommendations. Shows we you do. can watch instead of this that have similar themes. Yep. And for that I put True Beauty. Because yep. one, you still get to see Idol Channy. You still get Channy. In, I think he's in more of it, to be honest. He it's is. You get Channy. It's a slightly longer show with 16 episodes, but you get him and Unwoo. You get Unwoo. It's a great show. Idol is not as much a, uh... It's not the center point of the show. It's not the show. center point, but I also don't think it was the center point of this show. Nope. <laughs> was but not. But yes, he is I do idol. think, I do think it gives you, like, Chani's whole storyline there is a more accurate description oh, yes. of how the K-pop an, industry like an, works, Like, a K-pop sure. industry works and how, like, a scandal will destroy your career. Yes, Yes, entirely. that is 100% a better representation of it, and it's not even the main plot of the show. Like, No, it's, it's way like, better. plot number three. Yeah. In that show. And it does more with that plot line that took place over maybe a total of, like, five to ten minutes uh-huh. than this show did in 12 episodes with any of its plots. Yes. Um, so another one is The Best Hit, which is a show that I watched. It is it is focused on the K-pop industry, but it, it also involves, like, a weird time-traveling aspect and is also doing a lot of stuff with, like, K-pop industry in, like, the 90s. So it is very different of a vibe but i do think it is better because it is i think a better representation of k-pop generally it's uh, it is the main plot point of the show but it isn't just because there's a lot of other stuff going around in that as well so there's only a handful of people who are like involved in like the process of everything of that but i do think it does a better job representing it than it does here just because yeah. the representation here was so bad that really anything even remotely close to reality is better than what this show was so yeah and then lastly i have actually two one you could also just watch exo next door you could just you watch, could just watch exo, exo next, next door, door. You could, could do that it's an option it's about exo exo's playing themselves it yeah. just could happen you could just do that yep. or you can watch to be continued which is the astro um Drama, drama where yeah. Astro is just also, you know, about to be a K-pop group and going yep, through yep. the trials of becoming a K-pop group. You could just watch that. Both you, of those are better than this show. So many better options. And these are all things where, like, K-pop wasn't the center point of the show, even. But they're already doing a better job at, like, representing K-pop. So, lovely. Um, so now, we've really come to the realization that this was a waste of our time. Watching oh, entirely show. so. So we decided to become more depressed and look up what we could have watched while instead this was of the show while this was airing. Most yep. of these I have uh, seen. Some of these I haven't finished yet. I've but seen you... some of them. I've seen about half of them, so. And I have seen, like, a few of them and then I'm just 
in the middle of watching some of them. Yeah. So, uh, you could have watched Mouse. Uh-huh. That would recommend. Also... Would recommend. That was a great show. Love yeah. that. You could have watched Mine, which is a rich people murder show. We love, love rich people murder shows. We love a rich shows. people murder show. Great. You could have watched Doom at Your Service to get another you member of SF9 Dolphin. To that. get another member of SF9 and the same female lead. Not, yeah. Oh, yeah. You get the female, the female lead in a lead, better, but you get her. playing a better role in Doom yeah. at Your Service. Like, you so, you know, a lot of things there. It was also a very good show. I watched that one. Very if fun. you want a show that has a better representation of how toxic fandoms can be, watch Falling Into Your Smile, which is a Chinese esports show. Yeah. It's great. Great. It's very fun. It's you get a great, um, very cute. Very cute. And there's an idol in it. Shang Zhao from WJSN's in that show. Yep. She's very cute. You could also watch Moonlight, which had Esther from The Nine in oh, it. Oh, our favorite. You could have watched Octogenarians in the 90s, which I started watching. It's an adorable show about these two people that are in there running a uh, old people's home. Mm-hmm. Old people. They're adorable. <laughs> old people. Old people. <laughs> the exact opposite of K-pop idols. Yes, yes. But here, you, so many there's better so shows. There's so many better shows so many you better could have shows. been watching. <laughs> except so other than this nonsense. And I think yes. that's how we're going to have to end all of our... Um, evil PowerPoints. Evil PowerPoints are with recommendations of better shows you can watch. We do. Because we do got one more um, evil PowerPoint coming this year. At <laughs> least one planned. more. I won, yeah. At least one more. We're going to do the Penthouse 3 whenever that finishes. Because yep. they just added more episodes and also took a week off yeah so i that's gonna be interesting when we gotta release that um, oh boy it'll be a time it's not a good show though no Terrible. it'll maybe be almost more wild than this powerpoint we and might I need to start doing diagrams it is gonna be and it shows wild absolutely wild and it has and, and like the penthouse generally is a wild show but the penthouse three is like another level of wild oh yes we are also gonna figure out a um fun method of doing a powerpoint for shows we like yes because so we also like... need to talk about shows that we like instead of just complaining about the ones that we hate so yes we have the evil powerpoint for shows we hate and we're trying to come up with e uh you know angelic Not powerpoint a non -evil for song. powerpoint yeah the non-evil powerpoint mm -hmm. for shows we like yes but that's been the episode hooray what a fun episode we what a horrible it. show <laughs> We got through it. We did. Um, if you are listening to us uh, on YouTube, we are available on all major podcasting platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Pocket Cast and all of those fun places. And if you're listening to us on one of those places, leave us a review um, if you like the podcast. And then come check out our YouTube channel if you want to see the evil PowerPoint um, <laughs> being referenced this entire time and also fun clip videos that we release every week we also have a twitter um a knee slap and k-pop and an instagram account um the same thing that we are also not really using but the two of them are linked in the description of every episode so okay yay and we will see you guys next time bye, bye.